Your Excellency Julius Mada Bio, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Your Excellency Akainde Hichilema, President of the Republic of Zambia, represented by the Minister of Finance. His Excellency, my dear brother, Musa Faki Mohammed, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, it be represented by His Excellency Alba Muchenga, the AU Commissioner for Economic Development, Trade, Tourism, Industry, and Minerals. And I know you say you have several functions and we have to cut you in, in half. Please, we want you in whole one piece, one piece. But you're doing a great job, Commissioner. Thank you very much for your great support. Honorable Ministers, present members of the Diplomatic Corps and international organizations represent accredited to the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. My dear brother, Dr. Sidi Ud Tar, the Director General of Badia. My dear friend, very dear friend, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, globally renowned economist and the Director of the Center for Sustainable Development at Columbia University, who I understand is there actually with his dear wife. Executive Directors of the African Development Bank Group, Senior Management and Staff of the African Development Bank Group, Distinguished guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to welcome you to the presentation of the first edition of the African Development Bank's report on Africa's macroeconomic performance and outlook for 2023. I am deeply honored by the invitation from African Union's Commission's Chairperson, Musafaki Mohammed, to share the key insights and findings from this publication with you. Firstly, kindly accept my heartfelt regrets for my inability to be there physically with you at this time as previously planned for this event. As you can see, I am not in my traditional and standard bow tie. My dearly beloved mother was buried just on Saturday, so I'm still uh, with my family. And I will only be able to travel to Addis to join you all tomorrow, and definitely I will be in my boat high by then. I wish to thank you all for attending this special event. The African Development Bank officially released this important report on the 19th of January at our headquarters in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. I am very pleased to present today the first edition of Africa's Macroeconomic Performance and Outlook 2023 report right here in the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa. I am pleased to inform you that the African Development Bank Group is the first institution to release the macroeconomic outlook for Africa this year. And I must say that's the first time ever in its history. I commend the bank's economic governance and knowledge management complex, vice presidency led by Professor Rama for the continued efforts to provide sound and evidence-based economic intelligence to inform the much needed structural transformation across African economies as the world grapples with multiple and overlapping economic headwinds. Dear friends, our estimates show that Africa's average real GDP growth slowed to 3.8% in 2022. The slowdown reflects the impact of downside factors, including spillovers from rising global geopolitical tensions, climate change risks, and of course, the lingering impacts of COVID-19, which have been amplified by tightening of global financial conditions and the associated increase in domestic debt service costs. Now, despite the slowdown, Africa demonstrated continued resilience with all but one country maintaining positive growth rates in 2022 and with stable outlooks in 2023 and 2024. Africa's GDP growth rate is projected to average about 4% in 2023 and 2024, higher than the world's projected averages of 2.7% and 3.2% respectively. It's worth noting as well that five African countries have a projected annual GDP growth rate of more than 5.5%. And that means they could return to the league of the world's top 10 fastest growing economies 
in 2022. What a performance, in spite of all the challenges globally. The projected stability in medium term growth largely reflects the benefits of policy support in Africa, the global efforts to mitigate the impacts of exogenous shocks and rising uncertainty, and the stable growth in Asia. And as you know, that's one of Africa's main trading partners. African economies are indeed resilient. Despite the confluence of multiple shocks, growth across five African regions was positive in 2022. And the outlook for 2023-2024 is projected to be stable. As in other regions globally, of course, this medium-term outlook for Africa will continue to evolve in line with the developments in the confluence of overlapping shocks currently buffeting global economies. These include the ripple effects of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which continues to disrupt Africa's and global supply chains, while foiling food and energy-driven inflation. The tightening of global financial conditions and the associated increase in domestic debt service costs. The lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, which have reversed Africa's gains in poverty eradication efforts by more than a decade below pre-pandemic levels. And finally, elevated climate risks, which continue to exacerbate fiscal risks for countries. Ladies and gentlemen, global financial conditions are projected to remain restricted in the near term, compounded by increased volatility in global financial markets and persistent disruptions in global supply chains. This could put further pressure on exchange rates and keep debt vulnerabilities and domestic inflation at elevated levels, threatening food and security in most African countries. Already, I must say, 15 million more people were driven into extreme poverty in Africa in 2022 due to higher global energy and food prices, exacerbating the pandemic-induced increase in extreme poverty. A sustained increase in food and energy costs could plunge more people into poverty and threaten the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goal on eliminating extreme poverty. This highlights the need for Africa to continue to strive for higher growth rates and more inclusive, inclusive policies targeted to significantly reduce the burden on the most vulnerable and curb the widening income inequalities brought on by these economic disruptions. And that is why the African Union Commission and the African Development Bank Group commissioned a study on key actions to drive inclusive growth and sustainable development in Africa. The vision is to design and implement policies and programs that will drive the achievement of average GDP growth rates of 7% to 10% annually for the next 40 years. Now, I remember when we launched this report at the African Development Bank in Abidjan, my dear friend, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, actually said that Africa ought to be growing at 10% for more, many, many more years if we are going to be able to repeat what has been achieved in Asia. I couldn't agree more with Professor Jeffrey Sachs. This study will be the subject, of course, of your next session being co-convened by the bank and the African Union Commission, which starts just after this particular event. Dear ladies and gentlemen, overall, the global economy will continue to face enormous challenges in the near term. These will include rising food and energy prices, strong inflationary pressures, high debt vulnerabilities, and default risks, growth deceleration, and volatility in global financial markets. There is a need to strongly and collectively support Africa to navigate these challenges, especially on reducing debt burdens and debt vulnerabilities. Africa cannot run up the steep hill of much needed growth while carrying a pack of debt on its back. 
the rechanneling of the additional 100 billion special drawing rights to Africa will make a huge difference. And the African Development Bank and the Inter-American Development Bank are working very closely with the International Monetary Fund to try and see how this can be done. And I want to really thank uh, the IMF staff and of course, my dear sister, Kristalina uh, uh, Georgieva, uh, for all of the engagement on this. And I believe that we will make a lot of progress uh, down the line very soon. Because the African Development Bank, if we receive the rechannel uh, re SDRs, we can leverage these SDRs by three to four times. This, without any doubt, will make a huge difference. The African Development Bank is also working hard with others around the world to make sure that we optimize the global financial architecture while leveraging more resources to tackle the huge needs of climate change, infrastructure, energy, food, and health challenges, while of course attracting the private sector to invest at scale. We must all join hands to harness the enormous development opportunities all across Africa. There is no doubt in my mind that we can make even faster progress. Some recent developments in 2022 give renewed hope. Last year, the Africa Investment Forum, organized by the African Development Bank and its partners, successfully secured over $63 billion of investment interest to Africa it was incredible. The Tokyo International Conference on Africa, TICAD 8, held in Africa, committed $30 billion to Africa. President Biden and African heads of state got together for the US Africa Leaders Summit in Washington, DC, which secured $15 billion of investments to Africa. That was also quite incredible. And ladies and gentlemen, at the Feed Africa Summit held in Dakar, Senegal by the African Development Bank under the chairmanship of President Macky Sall, the chairperson of the African Union, mobilized $33.5 billion in financing from development partners from around the world in support of bold actions for Africa to feed itself and to fully unlock its agricultural potential trade with the rest of the world and boost jobs across its rural economies. Ladies and gentlemen, let us continue to join hands together, foster strong partnerships, leverage the private sector and fully optimize the global financial architecture to de deliver greater financing in support of Africa. That is the quickest way for us to achieve the Africa we want, and I'm quite confident that we'll be able to do that in the near future.